Not a very happy thought for the airline industry. For more on volcanic eruptions and their consequences, I'm joined now in the studio by an expert volcanologist and geologist, Thomas Walter. Thanks for joining us. Now, how high is the risk, actually, that neighboring volcanoes will also erupt on Iceland? Yes, indeed, we know that uh, the last two historic eruptions at Eyjafjalla were followed by an eruption at Katla Volcano. Mm -hmm. And Katla Volcano is often uh, considered to be the big uh, brother of Eyjafjalla. So that is a simple rule? What, what's the underlying mechanism? No, statistically uh, the number is two and uh, any statistics that is not allowed here. Um, but the pure observation was that in two eruptions, it was in the 16th century and uh, again in the 18th century, uh, Katla erupted uh, shortly after Eyjafjallajökull, and this was also the concern of scientists in the, in the past. But mm -hmm. at present, Katla is quiet and there is no uh, concern about okay, that. Okay, let's hope it will stay that way. Now what about Eyjafjalla? Will it really cool down now as it seems at the moment? Um, it's calming down. Um, mm -hmm. Whether it uh, will really stop to erupt, that's very difficult to, to say mm -hmm. at the moment. Um, we know that the um, eruption rate has uh, reduced in the past days. Um, it's about a tenth of what we have seen last mm -hmm. week. Were you actually uh, surprised by the fact of an uh, erupting Eyjafjalla? Um, not really, because we know in the scientific literature also uh, it was discussed that uh, Eyjafjallajökull prepared for an eruption over the last mm -hmm. 13 years. Uh, it was observed the volcano was uh, inflating, uh, the ground was deforming. We have seen early this year uh, lots of seismic activity and so uh, the volcano was getting ready to erupt. Mm -hmm. Uh, but you couldn't really tell uh, what the time then would be for the volcano to erupt. It was observed that uh, shortly before the eruption on 20th May, uh, uh -huh. 20th March uh, this year, that uh, seismicity sharply increased. And uh -huh. that was also the reason why uh, local authorities sh issued a warning uh, to the local uh, population. How many days before the eruption was that? Uh, I cannot tell the details, but this was uh, one of the eruptions which was uh, forecasted by local authorities. So far. Now we know that we have uh, lots of volcanoes uh, on the globe and we have a few pictures here where we can actually um, discover that they appear in certain patterns. What's the reason for that? Yes, most volcanoes uh, occur at plate boundaries, uh, but what we have seen here on this uh, illustration is that uh, these are the volcanoes which we see on Earth, but uh, we know also by volume that by far most volcanoes occur or volcanic eruptions occur submarine and we mm -hmm. have very little information about that. Mm -hmm. About the amount of ash that was uh, erupted by Eyjafjalla, um, it seems uh, a lot less than in former eruptions by Pinatubo or Krakatoa for example. What's the reason behind that? Well, this has to be explored also now by scientists. So it was shown that the first 72 hours erupted more than 10 times the volume of the last eruption at the same volcano. Eyjafjallajökull had in the 18th century an eruption with approximately 0.01 cubic kilometer of tephra, so ash. And this time, only the th first three days, it was about 0.14 cubic kilometer, so significantly larger as it has occurred in the past. So we have to wait for further details and research. Thanks a lot for the talk, Dr. Thomas Watte. Thank you too.